Hey everybody, so Thrustmaster just sent me their Viper TQS, and TQS stands for Throttle Quadrant System Mission Pack. So let's check it out. Got your Thrustmaster member card, and it's very securely packaged with these cardboard inserts. So let's go ahead and just get it out. USB to USB-C. And there you go. That looks very badass. Gear handle, all the right switches, all the right hotavs for the Viper. So let's go ahead and hook it up. I should also recognize my teammates for this episode. That's Decker. He's a PBGV. And over here is Sailor. She is a German wire-haired pointer. So they're here very interested in what's going on. So as I've documented on the channel before, but just as a reminder, I'm currently configured for a Hornet. I've been alternating between Hornet and Tomcat modules, mostly flying the B version of the F-14. But I have the Thrustmaster Hotaz throttle quadrant here, two throttles for two engines. But of course the F-16 only has one engine and it's configured for a side stick. So this next level racing sim pit has the modularity where reconfiguring for the Viper is not a big deal. So I will take the center stick and mount it over here on the right side. And Thrustmaster provided me this stick a while ago. I've used it for the A10 before, the A10 module, but now I'll just mount it on the side. Here's the throttle quadrant and stick mounted in the proper places for the F16 module. You can see here I actually have two bases, which makes moving the stick from the right side to the center easier. Otherwise, you're going to have to unbolt it and screw it back in, which is not a total hassle, but it would take longer. Thrustmaster has some clamping systems for tabletop, but because I have this sim pit, what I do is just bolt it on in two places, which makes this nice and sturdy, which is important. This has got an official U.S. Air Force endorsement, so you can assume it's accurate as a function of that by itself. So as I've mentioned before on the channel, I do have some stick time in the back seat of the TF-16N, the Navy Aggressor version of the Viper, flying with VF-43 at Oceana back in the late 80s, early 90s. So my first impression based on that flight time is this is very accurate. It feels like the real airplane. And obviously with the Air Force endorsement, we can assume that that is so. The TQS comes bound so it should be plug and play in terms of the interface with DCS. Um, I will say that my experience after I hooked this up was sort of hit or miss with respect to that. Some of the basics, antenna elevation, manual range, speed brake. This is what they call dogfight modes. And this is your radar cursor. So this all kind of fits together so you could be manipulating the radar antenna elevation while moving the cursor around. And then over here you have your radio controls. You can see it labeled here VHF, UHF, IFF. So everything's kind of in a place where once you get used to it, it's, it's going to be pretty intuitive. The throttle itself, this lever right here, allows you to pull it into idle cutoff and back again. And on the other end of the power spectrum, there's mill power and you lift it up. You don't have to use that pinky switch to get it into burner, but you lift it up and then you can be in burner. Other switches, as I mentioned, you got a gear switch and a whole bunch of other switches that I won't go into the details here. The other thing that is a DCS artificiality on this TQS pack is this switch here is your zoom switch and then you can reset it just by pushing it in so this is the one that I normally use on the other two throttle 
system for zooming. But if you're in the heat of battle, that, that's pretty far away. So this one is a good mod there for DCS specific stuff. Another thing to note is this slap button for expendables, flares, chaff. So if you're in the heat of battle, just hit that and chaff and flares come out as you have them programmed. This is another good reason to have this thing secure because if you just have it sitting on a tabletop and you hit that, it's going to knock the whole rig over. And as I mentioned before, this is the Viper stick that Thrustmaster gave me some months ago. And I have used it for the A10 module and actually the P51. So now it's pretty cool that I'm using it for the Viper mounted on the right side like a Viper stick should be mounted. All right, let's do a fan flight using the F-16 module and see how the TQS mission pack performs. So here we are at Creech Air Force Base in the Nevada desert, flying with the gamblers. Right inside the airplane, left side throttle quadrant, and you can see from the detail in this F-16 module that it is exactly like the Thrustmaster TQS throttle in terms of knobs and dials and rotaries. Gear handle, and I'll actually use the physical gear handle on the TQS mission pack to raise and lower the gear, which is pretty awesome. The F-16 is a fourth generation fighter, and so it's a hybrid in terms of MFDs and steam gauges. You can see we have altitude airspeed attitude, which is the backup attitude indicator, VSI, or what they call VVI, angle of attack, heading, and these other MFDs are the radar picture and moving map and those kinds of things. You can see moving the cursor here. So we won't get into the details of the weapon system in this episode. I'll do that later. This is just a FAM-1, let's call it. In the HUD, the F-16 HUD is really good. On the left is airspeed, on the right is altitude, Creech Air Force Base. Field elevation, as you can see, is 3,090 feet, so pretty far above sea level here in the Nevada desert. So let's go flying. Throttle to mill, off the brakes, staging burner, off the peg. There's 100 knots, going flying. Programming the stick aft. Gear's coming. Yep, see the gear handle's coming up. I will say it's not that easy to find behind the throttle in full burner. You gotta kinda reach over the throttle to find it. So one of the things to note is the TQS mission pack has throttle friction ability there's a cotter key that's in the kind of a weird place in the housing that you can adjust the throttle friction. I, I like how it feels right out of the box. It may be a little bit loose for, for somebody else. If you want a little more throttle friction, you can get it. As I mentioned, coming in and out of burner, you lift the throttle and push it forward. See the burner lighting there. Different than the other throttle quadrant that I use for the Hornet and Tomcat, which is sort of push through. There's a slight friction between mill and staging burner. You just push through it, but lifting the throttle up is not that big of a deal. As I said, I won't go into any of the weapon system, air to air, air to ground kind of stuff. I'll do a separate episode about that. This is just our FAM-1 to introduce the TQS mission pack. But it's pretty well known that the F-16 is an air-to-air -air dogfighting machine capable of nine plus Gs. But you don't want to be flying too fast because you can be flying 450 knots and pulling nine and a half Gs and not be rating the airplane efficiently. So you want to be more like 350. So let's slow down a little bit here. Here we go. Rolling, pulling, 
staging burner again. The airplane can rate all day. The vapes coming off here. All right, out of burner. Let's get some more speed back into burner. And let's go into the vertical. I'll head up at 450 knots. All right, up we go. Programming smooth aft stick. When I get to 90 degrees nose high, I'll just hold it. 80, 90, there we go. So let's take a look outside. Get coming out of burner. Okay, let's keep the pull coming. Powerful jet. Okay, one of the best tests of this throttle quadrant smoothness is flying formation and in-flight refueling. So here we are in what's called port observation on the KC-135. Now the Air Force style of tanking is, as you probably know, different than Navy in that the tanker is the male and the receiving aircraft is the female, as it were. Okay, so we'll drive into position. There we go. I like this visual right here. So it's just hanging here. And again, this throttle quadrant's nice and smooth. Okay, so I, I like the feel of this. Small corrections, constant corrections, and we're done. Okay, let's try a landing. Okay, heading back to Creech. Gears coming down. Putting the flight path marker where we want to land. Remember, Air Force, you flare to land, unlike a Navy airplane, you don't fly 700 feet per minute VSI all the way to touchdown, like a carrier landing. So, we'll do that. And I'll go to idle as I start my flare, just like a civilian airplane. There we go, flaring. And we're on deck. The center line's hard to see because of all the skid marks here. Okay, start to apply brakes a little bit here. Again, this throttle quadrant is nice and smooth. It feels just right for landing. So there is a real quick Viper fam. I look forward to getting into the details of both the air to air and air to ground capabilities of this module in DCS in the weeks to come. I'm liking the feel of the Thrustmaster TQS, and if you're a Viper driver, I think you'll like it too. For more technical specifics about the Thrustmaster Viper TQS, check out Red Kite's episode on the subject. Link is in the episode description below. All right, that'll do it for this episode, and I look forward to talking to you again very soon.